touch on something right here and continue for less. I know it was, it was suddenly probably interrupted at a certain point, and we're going to continue with that. But I just got some good news, you know, um, more good news. Every day is good news, but certain, certain um, news, you know, that you get, especially ones putting into effect the teaching and more more than the teaching even, along with the teaching. And then says it's more than just the teaching on the level of just reading, studying, and learning. It's putting into action these things and that can only be accomplished by faith. Um we heard from one of I and I brothers and this is Salam to, to Brother Quad um in Ghana and, and the brothers and sisters um with you and along with you and, and praying for you and those who love his name. Adamawi Hala Salasi and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christos. Um <laughs> he's slick willy though, but still is 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 cool. I love you, you know, on that one right there. And um if you was here right now, you know, I'll put an arm around you and I'll kiss you and it's no homosexual shit, as you know, in Rastafari. The Rasta stuff, well, you know, God 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 forgive forgive those who fall short and may they repent of that, but I love you, yo. Um, this is just a, your letter is is was timely, and I give thanks to the the secretariat and and Sister Titna for bringing that to I and I attention on that particular matter right there. And this just kind of brings to mind and connects with a recent. Um, video of a couple of days ago concerning Shashimani and the land grant, and then seeing on the the, the Google Earth. Mm -hmm. See, this is casual, right? I'm seeing on the Google Earth. Um, we're about to get back, get forward in the teaching and continue with this. But this is just a, a kind of a little good news, a big good news. But um, um, we saw on the Google Earth, right? We saw on the Google Earth that had Jamaican Sephra. And when we first looked at it, you know, we we looked at it a little now mindedly. You know what I mean? And um and that might be a little evident if you see the three videos that we did. If you go from the first one to the third one, you can see how the Holy Spirit um um illuminated my heart and mind and I tried to reflect that in what I said and even correct or clarify, you know, when I saw Jamaican suffer, I'm like, that's, e that's Ethiopian World Federation. Well, yes, the e the Ethiopian World Federation is the instrument. And it's still, in spirit and truth, it is still an instrument for I and I to fulfill I and I Father's will in this time and this dispensation based on his prophetic and his guiding word and the testimony of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. So when I saw Jamaican Sefer, Sefer being area, I looked at it a little bit now mindedly, and um, I testified about this just, just, just previously, privately, or at least not on these means right here. I said, let me make a public um, testimony on that. Because we know there has been a lot of um, tribal, in a sense, ism, you know, amongst us, in ignorance of us even knowing who we be. You know, you African American or you Afro American, you um, Jamaican, you West Indian, you Hispanic, you this, you that. But as as we're studying the Torah portions, right? And 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 this is where it kind of segues. And maybe without any further kind of interruption or ado, we might just segue into it. But here's where such such documents mm -hmm, come in handy when you start to study it and you start to see the application of it. And Brother Quad and others who are either in the mainland, you understand, in the homeland, that's homeland security. That's homeland security. Rastafari homeland security, maybe we call it, we'll call it that. That's what it is for I and I. It's I and I homeland security. We've got to secure our own inheritance. If we don't, then we waive our rights. And then the Gentiles and foreign nationals come in and do what they've been doing. But when we um, be born again, see, the whole thing is about that, that, that repentance and that birth again, because you cannot see it. This is why some folks don't see it, is because they're not ready to be unplugged. 
And on a level, you have to recognize that is their choice. If anything, pray for them. And don't begrudge them personally. Because, see, when you're on that level, it's the, the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of Jah. You know, so being on those particular levels don't work out for anything. And they might and usually will if you hold on to them too long inordinately, they will work ad adversely, you understand, um, against your and others' best interests for all of you. So this is about homeland and security, our homeland. So I, I put out this particular vid, and maybe we'll try to connect this, you know, um, this, is a, this one right here, Shashimani, is still the issue. You understand? Because for all the other issues, Shashimani is still the issue. You understand? Shashimani is the issue because Shashimani is a point. But Ghana, along with Shashimani, we also have to, to show you the back of this right here, um, Ghana, because Ghana has, has really um, embraced our people over here in the West, you know, as Africans. But we, as Africans, as black people, so-called, you know, we still use that basically. It's really, it's really the height of it. We was talking recently, since it's going to be a homeland security uh, video, our homeland security. Get that HSI, Hava Selassie first, right? Get it? Um, homeland security um, video. I mean, this is this issue is just so, it's so, it's so pregnant. You understand? And you know, like, like we have to protect that, that, that particular seed. You know, um, you know, this is just beautiful in a sense. Brother and sisters, uh, we have to recognize as, as um, newborns, you know, once you receive this and once it begins to positively um, affect and reflect your, your spirit and your, your soul, then the body whether through changing what you eat physically or changing how you speak and how you feel, you understand, in accordance with the will of our blameless creator, in accordance with the will of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshi, Jesus Christos. You see, that's the standard for all of us. You understand, because we were to live, and when we live that life, like His Majesty so testifies to a lot of these other issues would, would not even be issues. And even the issues that are seem like problems will be challenges that will be met and will be overcome in righteousness. So Africa awaits her creators, but it's the righteous so-called Africans. It's, it's the righteous amongst even our people. So we have to recognize what is that righteousness of. It's not something we do. That's self-righteousness. That's self-will. And this Torah portion already shows us um, that it's not about that. It's not about our, it's about his, and what is righteousness? You see, righteousness is that right relationship, you understand, in this trifold aspect of our spiritual life, our psychological, our mind state, and how we're living, you understand, and the, the healthiness. The key thing, even the whole I teaching, actually is pointing to health. And y'all willing will make that particular connection. But something that the brother said, Quad from Ghana, and that just shows I know we need to get, you know, our organization more together. That, that, that's the main thing is getting our organization together. And this is one of the reasons why we'll probably try to send you a copy, um, try to send this to brother Quad, a copy of the UCC, our UCC. Because there's the universal commercial codes, which we touched on that, the Moors deal on that greatly, and a lot of the other sovereign groups, the European foreign nationals, um, like the militia groups, the other uh, sovereign sovereignty groups speak on it. But the Moorish application of it is the best perspective for us because the link with the Moors is the Ethiopian Moors or the Amhara, and we now have that particular, um, that's a bridge right there. But this is something that um, we have updated. Um, this is from the Office of Executive Ministry of the Church, because we are a church. You see that that churchical divine heritage aspect must be reestablished in our hearts and our minds for an organization and an instrument like the Ethiopian World Federation 
to be viable as a foundation for a global world government. You see, a, go, a global world government, you understand, of our own that's based on the kingdom of God in Christ, in spirit, and in truth. So we're going to send a copy of this, what we call the Universal Church Code. Basically, it's our bylaws and order of official business. And we originally updated this for some of the um, individuals and groups members and units and others out there that say in the area that we're in there's this fellowship or we're seeing the status of the church or a bookstore or we're working on a piece of land, you understand, to establish a piece of land where ones can come out to and kind of prepare for the promised land, uh, uh, almost like a place where ones can, in a sense, deprogram from, you understand, refresh, you know, get prepared and everything for the, the, the moves to come. Um, and whatever the particular calling is, because my father's house, there are many mansions, and sure, our black Lord and Savior wouldn't have told us if it was Wishitam, if it was a lie. So it's Ilnet, Ilnet. You understand? It is, it, is, it is truth. So this right here has been uh, adapted from the Ethiopian World Federation Constitution bylaws. You understand? by imperial permission and by permission of the, the rightful name and authority and the holder of the Metzhaf Kedus. And, and we touch on that right here. Let's just give you a, a little bit of hearing of this. And this basically is, does not speak so much theologically speaking in the sense of churchical on that level. This is talking about the order of business. So we as as many can come together in the in the new covenant of the King of Kings and His Christ and establish the the churchical foundation. You understand? There's a particular churchical. When we talk about Orthodox Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church, when we talk about Tawahedo, this is what we're speaking of. Rastafari is 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 was birthed in the spirit of what we know truly as Tawahedo. You understand? Even the teachings concerning God and man and Christ and the manifestation of Hala Selassie is a testimony to the Tawahedo teaching. Unfortunately, ones and ones are looking outside of themselves, in a sense, for a Christ, in a sense, yours are looking outside of themselves and are not taking his word on the inside. See, we take his word on the inside and we make our wills obedient to good influences, then we are able to, to, to do the will, you understand, and to, to bear the fruits and to partake in the blessings of our birthright and to live in covenant, to live in the al to live in this new covenant. In fact, everything is already there. I mean, the, the Bible is such an important book, but it cannot be approached ignorantly. So concerning our UCC, Standing bylaws, official order of business. But before we get into this, the brother Quad had gave us a, we call this a homeland security in a sense update. You know, saying what's happening in our homeland, and he said he really gets to recognize being there in Africa, how we as a people are like a a we're Africans, yes, but we're a unique people. We as a people are a unique people, and in fact, if you study the scripture and you've been studying the, the Torah portion, reading and feeding. This is why um, we would like to get a copy of this to you, Brother Kwai, because you study this being in the land too now. A lot of this that's in Torah becomes more operational when you're in the land. If you've already been studying before getting into the land and you already accept, accept Christ to the glory of the King of Kings, the glory of Kedemah, we have this last, the glory of God in Christ. And once you accept that and you begin to learn, then when you reach the, the um, how can we say, you reach the, the, the land, but that's like reaching the, um, um, like providence. You're reaching the area of providence. You reach, the boots are on the ground. When your boots, after the basic training, and the basic awareness of this, and when your boots get on the ground, then you see how everything else begins to apply, because a lot of it concerns the land, and it concerns food, it concerns how we live and farming, everything that's healthy, you understand? And even in a pragmatic, worldly sense, 
you know, everything that's also blessed and rich. You know, saying land is the basis of, of wealth. If you don't believe me, you'll believe John Locke because he established, you know, he is he established this whole um, what you call um, um, economic system. He's one of the great economists, English. Um, Anglo economist John Locke, and he spoke that land is the basis of wealth. You know, so our homeland out there to prevent it from being further gentrified, as what we see happening in South Africa and in some cities and other areas, and even in Zimbabwe, we really have to get up to speed. So we want to send the full four um, four books of of them. So as you go through the the, the Shabbat studies. You'll see some areas will really uh, apply even more than others in particular time. And also the book that we recommend to those who have gotten up to the point of territory, I think that's the word I was looking for, territory, we recommend one other book. We recommend this book right here, right? We recommend Judaism, right, and vegetarianism. This is an excellent book right here by Richard um, H. Schwartz. Schwartz is German for black. Schwartzer. You Schwartzer. I think that's how they say it, like nigger or whatnot like that. Yeah, so this is an excellent book. It's holistic. It's really speaking about how Judaism in its highest abstraction but highest manifestation is Rastafari. This is what this book basically ex expresses and explains, and it uses Torah and a lot of things that we have said and also aspire for in the spirit. Now it's kind of explained in its um, modern application, Judaism and vegetarian. In fact, Judaism and vegetarian is Rastafari, if you really understand. So this book is a wonderful application because it's, it's dealing with how we live that way, how we establish a community, a kibbutz. I don't know if that's um, what is also on your, your mind, Brother Quad, and other brothers and sisters out there that have, have moved to um, the inheritance or moved to the land, you know, because when, you, when you're on the land, you see Torah becomes that true language or land gauge you know, how to gauge in order how to be blessed because there's a lot of ecological, you understand, and good ecology is taught in Torah concerning the land. It's more than just feast and festival and celebration and holy days. It is that. But there's a, there's a whole divine order, and those are the, those are the, the, the climaxes in that sense along this holistic liberty this holistic way of life. And I submit to you all that previous phases of Rastafari, although being um, faithful and true in this basic calling, had lacked the ability. Some, some got it, like, like Bobo Shanti on a certain level, they got it. You know, we're saying 12 tribes of Israel, even on a, no, a next level, they got it. But a lot of other ones... I look at Naya Bingi more like a, a, a place to go or a, a, among ones to go to chant and praise. But on that level of being able to, to establish Jah's order in its sense of land, you know what I mean? Um, it hasn't done that just yet, and the reason why is because it has to submit to the teaching of his majesty more fully. I know a lot of folks will say Bingi is, is the MC of his majesty, so forth and so on. So where's the Amharic? And then if you say that, 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 well, you don't have to deal with him, Harik, well, then we'll submit to you his majesty's statement on that language. And for us, for us as Arasafari to say that, it's more than wish it's, 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 it's almost a heresy in a sense, you know. And those who here say this need to stop it because you're partaking in heresy. But, um, yeah, so this is a very good book, too. This is this is a this is a very good book, uh, Judaism and Vegetarianism. If you get a copy and check it out, and those who have checked it out, I'd like to see what they say, what they testify to, and their testimonial on it. And depends on if you're already in the land. If you have a little piece of land and you start to look at this, you really can see what the Bible is talking about. A lot of us um, we reject the lost sheep because we've been put into a project. 
and there's this project mentality where we, I mean, maybe people have a little garden. Now they recognize we want to come out, so what they, what they try to do is give you a little garden. They say, well, we'll give you a little community garden, a place you can go down and sit and around flowers and trees and take the children and so forth. And, and that, is, that is good as, as a short term or an intermediate something. But they, they're trying to sell that to people as a long term. In other words, they're trying to have you focus on that. You have a little garden or something in the inner cities, which is good, or your backyard, which is good, but that's, that's just a trial level. You know, that's just a kind of like trying out and getting your skills up. You know, that's like a workshop, in other words. But they're trying to have that sell it to us as an end-all and be-all, while there, the Europeans, foreign nationals, and others are increasingly trying to get stock, right, in our promised land because it's still the cleanest and purest land on the face of this earth. We're speaking about Africa because it's so big. You understand it's so big. That means so many of us who are squeezed up here in the ghettos are fighting among ourselves and everything because we need space. I and mean, we need space to even think our ideas, much less to do and to be about our ideas. So this is also a message to say how important Torah is for us in our African Zionism or Ethiopianism. That's African Zionism for us equals Ethiopianism from, from, from our um, perspective. Now, the point that the brother had made mention of that was interesting, he has he spoke about the tribes, like, the, like, like we're a unique people. And, like, everyone is, you know, they are amongst their tribes. Because we also are a tribe. But what happens is that we don't even establish any real unity based on John's word of covenant in our true birthright over here. Rarely does that happen over here in the wilderness. And then we expect that, well, the Africans should just, just open up to us because we're black. And, you know, in other words, we're looking for a shortcut. And the old saying is that a shortcut gives deep scars. A shortcut is, is, how, is how cutters are taught, you know, whether butchers or not. If you want to make a deep, you know, deep scar, it's a shortcut. So we're taking shortcut and we're getting caught up in a deep scar. Civil rights was a shortcut, you understand? And we're, and we're now experiencing the sting and the pain and, and, this, and, this, and this gorging through so many layers of our being that this that this folly has 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 caused now this particular book here is so interesting you probably know this one right here you should know it um the real facts about ethiopia because um um speaking about ethiopian rastafari and ethiopian and uh homeland security or rastafari homeland security because rastafari covers all of Africa. You have to understand that. But but the Rastafari um, who are of the Society of His Majesty, you understand? In particular, we understand what Ethiopia is as a as an ancient hub of that freedom and continental unity. But some might be called to go into different countries in addition or besides Ethiopia. Ethiopia should be that, that holy land that at the holy times we come up to the holy city. You understand? Um, that should be the Feast of Tabernacles. In fact, I'm not saying that it should be in the sense of making them. Zeph uh, Zechariah <laughs> already said it in his word. And any people that do, do not come up, they're not going to have good crops. You know, no water, no rains will be given to them, and we see an effect of that right now in Africa with the famines, because ones are not giving John his praise and they're not living in his ways. But this this particular article right here, I wanted to share with you because it's, it speaks about how do the Ethiopians feel toward the Afro Americans? Because in saying Afro Americans, I'm going back to look at that Google Earth vid where the Jamaicans suffer. I said, well, you know, that's that's. Perfect. Once I start to look at it, His Majesty's way, I, I start to say, all right, it's, it's good to remind that it's the Federation, the proper order of things, but um, there's still so much land. You see what I'm saying? So much land. So I'm calling on those in this society, in particular Ethiopia as priority one, 
You understand? But there are other places in Africa where our brothers and sisters are, and we need to support them, pray for them, and do what is in our power. You understand? And don't think you can't do anything. Prayer, it says the the um, effective prayer of a righteous man um, doeth much or availeth. I think it says availeth much. But it says, but the Ethiopians do not consider themselves Negroes. Many Afro-Americans will say, in other words, many African-Americans will say the Ethiopians don't consider themselves Negroes. This is true. They object to the word, and so, for that matter, do many Afro-Americans, not to mention the Afro-American south of the Rio Grande who do not use it. Now, something very interesting was going on right here. And this is J. A. Rogers, around 1930. Um, when is this book? When was this book was first published? 36, around 1936, right? And he's using Afra, which it almost seems to be a form of Afar and Efraim, and that is very, very important. Because remember, we just touched on Hosea, we just touched on Judah for a moment, I want to put this into the evidence, right? Because we're going to touch on numbers, but numbers is interesting. We still have more to say about the Sota for a moment, but this is not about the Sota. We already hinted that the Sota really, you understand, is Babylon or counterfeit, counterfeit orthodoxy or counterfeit religion, spirituality. It's not New Jerusalem, which is coming down from heaven, but it is mystery Babylon. Why y'all do that? Why y'all say that? For what reason? You don't know, so why are you doing something you don't know? That don't make no kind of sense there. So that's blind faith. We're not speaking of blind faith. But they say right here, the af ra ma ri -tan, Right? And what I want to link right here is Afar right here. Afar. Right? Look at Afar, right? And then you'll see this in another form in the Bible as Ophir. Right? You'll see Ophir. Right? And then Afro-American. Now, biblically speaking, we have Ephraim. Now, I know some of the Hebrew Israelites will probably disagree a little bit here based on one, one interpretation which has much relevance. The Hebrew, black Hebrew, Israelites interpretation of where the different tribes and nations are, it has a relevance, but as much a relevance it has, it also ne neglects what the, the 12 tribes of Israel points to, which speaks to the individual, they say, so-called sun sign. Some will say, well, how can you put a tribe like that? Tribe works in both of those ways, both for what particular seed you understand, you are according to your racial nationality, but also according to your star. Now, if you say, well, why are you saying star? That's not like some star stuff. Oh, he's coming with some false counterfeit doctrine or something like that. He don't know what he's talking about. Turn to Genesis 15 and 5 for a moment, if you will. It says, look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. And then it says that your seed shall be, and so shall your seed be. Let me just go right here to this. So there's a spiritual connection. But remember, most folks are having such a hard time recognizing what's right before their face, you know, you know, getting over the light skin, dark skin issue. You understand, the kinky, kingly, wavy here, they're having all sort of psychological breakdowns on such obvious and simple overt issues. Says, and he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. Huh? If thou be able to do what to them? Number them. Are, are we still in John's territory right here? You know, I and I didn't sit down and, like, try to make this up or whatever. We studied it, yeah. But we, we, we're following the Holy Spirit, and we've been noticing, wow, the Holy Spirit said, check that verse right there. We just checked that verse. And then it said, check what James says, what Jacob says. It says, if thou be able to number them, number them. That brings us right back to the book of Numbers, County Accountability, the host, the army, right? And I was speaking from this book right here, the real facts. Right, the real facts, right, about Ethiopia. This particular book by J. E. A. Rogers from 1936, where he has a, a an op-ed opinion article or, or a, a article right here where he says, 
how do the Afro American how do the Ethiopians feel towards Afro American? And then I noticed that at the Ethiocentric period of the Ethiop the height of the Ethiopianism period amongst us is once lost but now found. The same core time that the Federation, Ethiopian World Federation, would be born and would come into manifestation, and Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan, we have this form being used, Afra American. That's wild. I said, wait, Afra, Afra, Ophir, Ephra, Ephra. Remember, Ephraim is doubly. The name Ephraim means doubly fruitful. Let's get that out of the way, right? Doubly fruitful. The Holy Spirit is reminding me of what I said at the beginning of not this part, but the previous part. What did we speak about? We spoke about the double. There's something double about this, doubly fruitful, Ephraim, right? And I noticed the prophetic word in Hosea. For a while I've recognized that the prophet Hosea particularly speaks to both the careless Ethiopians, native in Africa, and we out here in the diaspora. It's like one sword that has two sides. And you can also see the prophetic the prophetic um, um, great transgression against the king of kings, the creeping coup in Ethiopia is also figured in that Armageddon 1974. So that's kind of really interesting right there, and, and John Woolen will be able to develop and see a little bit more into that. But now we have the Afro-American, Afar, Ophir, but then you also have Amir here, Amir, Americ, Americ, like Amharic, the Amirs, the Mares, the Moors, the Moorish, you understand? Whether it's Ishmael or whether it's Israel, they both are what? Or even Moab, you're still part of the family of Abraham. They get, get it? You understand? So you see that link right there. So it's speaking to the different tribes even over here. So we do have different tribes. Now there's a spiritual, what like the Moors call it the Zodiac calendar. And our own form of the Zodiac calendar would be what the 12 tribes, the TTI, also have by linking your tribe on a metaphysical basis to your, your sign vis-a-vis -vis the 12 tribes. Now, some folks would be like, oh, that can't, that doesn't make sense, I saw the tribe. But that is a higher level. That's like high school. You really can't get into that with everyone because everyone is still having a lot of difficulty with you know, are you lighter than me, darker than me, how you're here, how long you're here, how short. You know, they, they still are looking at little simple materialism kind of things. You know, they, 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 they're still caught up on appearance. They're still judging by appearance, but not by righteousness. Because they don't seek first the kingdom of the king of kings and his Christ and his righteousness, right, and his righteousness. So right here you see the star link, right, in Genesis in Genesis chapter 15 and 5, and that's the very same chapter, right, where the great horror, you understand, the horror of great darkness fell upon Abraham, and he said to Abram, excuse me, Abram, know of a surety, no for show, no for show that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. There's a vid out saying, what? 500 years after, right? And also that nation whom they shall serve, will I judge? Will he what? Judge. Now we say, well, John's going to judge it. If you read prophecy and scripture correctly, John will judge. But there will be a generation, you understand, who will be those assessor judges and co-judges. Christ said it. He says, you'll be on 12, stone, 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? So you have to see the connection even in the mysteries you see it with Osar, Osiris, and the 42 assessor gods. You understand? Basically, they are the cold judges. You understand? So that judgment, he can judge them any time. Jah is all kahale kulu. You understand? He can judge it. El Shaddai, judge it any time he wants to. But if he, if he allows that, then both he will, he will, he will uh, become, become something that he can't be, but he will be sinful to his own word untrue to his own word, you understand? And then he will also eliminate all of us who are trying at the same time. It will basically just shut it down, you understand? But he is, he is faithful and true even if, 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 if we fall short, 
You know what I'm saying? But if you fall short, get your get, get back up, get on your horse, dust yourself off, recognize your fault, correct your mistake, you know what I'm saying, repent and, and, and let's move on. You know what I'm saying? It's not a nourishment. People get caught up in the frozen psychological state of guilt because they're not going to Christ. And if they go to Christ, they don't trust his word. You see what I'm saying? In the innermost of the inner. But he says he's gonna judge that nation and he says, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. This is the time. This is why Babylon having so much economic difficulty because we have our hand on great substance as a people, even in and especially, here's what's so wonderfully weird about it, even especially in this particular condition. This, you know what I mean? But notice something it says right here. It says, and thou shalt go to thy fathers in, in peace, and thou shalt be buried in a good old age, speaking of Abram. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again. This is the spiritual Egypt we've come to right now. And this uh, is this, uh, Luna, this uh, Luna Naughty. Luna Naughty. And, um, it says, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Don't make a mistake about Amorites. You understand? Amorites and, and, and Amara. Don't, don't, don't make a, 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 a twisty. Because you have Asher and Asher in Hebrew. Which Asher am I speaking about? You see, I'm the, the Asher says that which is in that sense, or am I talking about the Asher, which is saying, which is saying happy or blessed? Which Asher am I, or am I, or am I saying Asa, Asa, which means ten? Which one is that, what I'm, I'm, I'm saying? So learn the language, learn the context, learn the hard, soft tones, and then it becomes more clear. So study and show ourselves approved. So the Amorites, right, will come forward, or there'll be iniquity. This is what you see going on with this relationship among, it's like, it's like there's a British invasion going on. And not so much of our people on our behalf, but of their people, even some of their people, you know, or our people on their behalf. There's something weird going on between mother and daughter. I think the war and the invasion and that coalition of the willing was a kind of sign after 9-11. That was an overt sign. And when the Queen of England, when she came over here and met with Bush, and that was 400 years of the founding of the Jamestown um, colony. Remember when Bush kind of flirted or said some weird stuff to the Queen of England, and she kind of looked a little bit, all right, all right, so forth and so on. But that's interesting. She came over here for the 400th anniversary of the founding of one of the first colonies, Virginia. And there's a little black nobility issue in that, too, about was Virginia a black woman? But in their story, she was a, black, she was a woman that was cuckoo, and so he sent her over here. You know what I'm saying? And, and she had, like, mental trouble, whatnot, so forth and so on. But then, according to other evidence, she was black, or she was part of that so Sophia, Charlotte, Charlotte, Sophia, um, so forth and so on, part of them whitewashing the black nobility and Germanizing it with the German invasion um, into the English po uh, politica, politique. Um, but be that as it may, there's a connection here, right? There's a very, very interesting connection. So let's just go on with this if we can um, complete this. So it uses Afro-American. I want to make a note about Afro-American, and we'll hopefully return to that particular point. I think we need to continue um, and in some cases reclaim this particular nomenclature, this naming, this particular name. It's very important. You understand? Know because this is a generation who knew something, did something that we can look to and not just feel proud of, but it actually, it actually is worth something still, even after all these years, especially now, right? So it says that uh, Afro-Americans south of the Rio Grande do not use it. Isn't that interesting? The Af because they're Americans too. They're in America, South American. They're not Americans. <laughs> you know, with that, the Moorish have something in that argument that they have. You need to check out that Moorish argument concerning the Americas and the definition of what America is too, legally speaking, lawfully speaking, according to international law. So they are Afro-Americans. You know what I'm saying? We'll say South Americans, but Afro Americans south of the Rio Grande who don't use Negro either to refer to them, right? Themselves. A leading Ethiopian once said to this writer, quote, We think of ourselves as a nation and not a race. 
Now, some might be like, oh, what does that mean? So from so on. But he furthermore said, this does not mean that we do not recognize our kinship with peoples of African descent in the New World. We wish you would urge as many as possible of your skilled farmers, mechanics, and scientists to come to Ethiopia. We need them here and would give them land free. Now, this is, remember, this is 1936. This is still during the imperial when the monarchy of the King of Kings and his Christ was in full effect, that 3,000-year-old monarchy, right? So that's still the basis. So what's going on now is some politics, but we need to get in country, our boots on the ground, and then maybe us or our children's children can deal with the politics, you understand? If, if that is, you know, if that really needs us to even deal with it. But in the situation that is, we as Rastafari do encourage our fellow Rastafari brothers and sisters of our true position should be monarchist. You know what I'm saying? That does not take away from his majesty. People say, well, if you have another emperor, so forth and so on, or another king, even a constitutional monarch, that's the system that his majesty was introducing and working with before the Illuminati um, conspiracy against our Davidic, uh, Judeo-Christian um, polity or against the kingdom, the empire of the king of kings. So um, that has to be dealt with too. But it's important to understand that the Ethiopians consider themselves a nation. That means there are many races, to say many seeds, a seed. A man has seed, or they call it sperm, and, um, or semen, which if you look up is seed, and he has a wife or a woman, and she gives birth, and then that becomes a, can become a nation. This is what we're talking about in Torah. You understand? Or a race from a certain progenitor. So it's saying that we don't consider ourselves all to be of that one literal seed, but we are many seeds that come together under the covenant seed. That's what Ethiopia was, under the covenant seed. In other words, under God's order of things. In Ethiopia, that system was blessed. And sooner or later, Ethiopia and the Ethiopians will, will see that. You understand? Sooner or later. It's just a, just, it's a matter of choice. You understand? That's why the architect, you know, allows that choice. And choice is the most, can't get beyond any choice. This is the choice. Ethiopia has always shown her friendliness to such Afro-Americans as her visitor. Menelik. Menulik uh, had a black West Indian um, named Dr. Vitalian as his personal physician and advisor. He warmly welcomed uh, Sylvain, the Haitian poet, and Daniel R. Alexander, a missionary who still resides at Addis Ababa. In other words, there were many ones, even Rabbi, um, Rabbi uh, Arnold Ford, Josiah, Arnold, uh, Josiah Ford, or Rabbi Josiah, Brother Josiah, he went, and he also, and many others did, even during that particular time. Um, three different missions to the United States tried to get trained Afro-Americans in vain. And that's interesting. At 1937, there were three different missions of the imperial government to the blacks, the Afro-Americans in America, to get trained Afro-Americans, but those three attempts proved um, fruitless. It kind of reminds me of the whole Soa, the parable of the Soa, prove uh, fruitless. May we be that good ground and use this opportunity that we have before it's too late. In 1930, Haile Selassie first appointed Dr. J.B. West of Washington, D.C. as his personal physician. Um, he gave uh, Hubert Julian a large sum of money and made him a colonel in his army and conferred on him the gold order of Menulik. There are some who say that this Herbert Julian might have been an imposter on some sort of a level or might have received this good well wish but did not live up to it. You understand? And there's some out there, some of y'all, Sister Willetta, Haile Selassie, perhaps you can. Um, help to illuminate us or point us to some illumination that's associated with the Ethiopian Holocaust. And we, we, we suggest that you um, 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 
support her site and 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 her research and the the Ethiopian Holocaust, her efforts for the Ethiopian Holocaust um, research committee and the other activities to keep that so we can say never again to those injustices and atrocities that happen. Um, then it goes on to say that he made John Robinson, some say these two are confused, of Chicago one of his principal aviators and is using Afro-American World War veterans, veterans as drill masters. So we have a historical, historical ties and we need to build on them and strengthen them. Lastly, in one of his declarations, Hala Selassie has announced that he is not only head of Ethiopia, but of all peoples of African descent everywhere. Like it or not, you see, um, in the covenant, you know, we, we don't choose our, our king. Some things you... We, we don't choose those things. That's why it's called elect of God. Siyuma Egziavi here. Yovas. And now that the Kielis, the rebels, the Manafik, and the Kahadi Woj think they have destroyed that, is Africa better off without the divine heritage and the monarchy in effect? It's obviously that it's not. So we see the evidence of that is clear. The question is, what are we going to do about it? Afro-Americans in Ethiopia will be well received, but there's a note, a caution, provided that they do not go there with ears of superiority and that they remember that the Ethiopians, never having been under white domination, look upon themselves exactly as white Americans or Englishmen do themselves in their own land. And I think a lot of our people, and I think part of it is the lack of a full, it's a partial birth. You understand? They don't really get born again in, in full. Because if you get born again in full, it becomes a logical point. You know what I mean? It becomes a logic. We don't see that from our experience. You see, because it wasn't there in our experience. You understand? Because we recognize by Scripture what went on and, and how that happened. And now in reversing the curse, we are coming out of Babylon and we're preparing for the promised land the Torah studies and, and getting our faith base. You know what I'm saying? So that should be understood. Let's understand that. Not to go there, oh, I'm African, I'm going to teach you how to live and all this kind of stuff, and you have no organization. You see what I'm saying? You, you know what I mean? You didn't come bring no organ. You don't even have a spirit amongst y'all. You're, you're infighting among yourselves. How does that look? And how did that look even when it occurred among, like, the pioneer settlers? But this is not to blame them. This is what we can learn from that. Because if we don't, something worse will happen. And some say some of that is, 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 is on the verge of happening if we don't get our acts together. You understand? We don't pray and then work to correct this. Besides, there will be a mutual economic benefit. I mean, and it's not to be pragmatic, but on a pragmatic level, you think some would say, hmm, you know, Things ain't working out over here, and I hear them talking about international, global markets. White man is sending off his business overseas around the world, and niggas still trying to get a, a corner store job on a level, and not even own the corner store, or not even work for their own kind in that sense. It's, it's ridiculous. So there is an economic benefit for both Afro-Americans and Ethiopians, and on some level, we must say that uh, the that, uh, that, uh, former Ethiopian World Federation local that's now known as uh, Tor Tribes of Israel have done well, especially in a community sense. You understand? And yes, they mainly are identified because that was a Jamaican local with a Jamaican sefer. So you see how it goes with I and I now, who are supposed to be the headquarter or the descendants of the headquarter aspect, you understand? to establish a, a, a foothold because there's so much land. We already show you the land. But it's not just to go there because you want to get land, but first to get one's organization. And this is what Numbers deals with, our service and our walk. And at the, at the root of it is that spree de corps. What spirit do we have in our body? Uh, as we come together to form one body, what's the spirit 
Are we all on our moods and attitudes, or have we submitted and, and made our wills obedient to his influence? So we all can be blessed in that unity, Jehovah's. And when our people see that among any of our people, as they've seen it somewhat among 12 tribes and among, you know, uh, Bobo Shanti even, even in Ghana and other places, our African um, peoples work with that. They're proud of that. They are not just proud of it, but it's like, why shouldn't it be that way? You know what I mean? You don't want to bring, excuse my language, nigga shit to Africa. You know what I'm saying? It's bad enough that a lot of that gets over there through the media, you know, through what we're doing over here. But we shouldn't go over there and bring that same thing. You know, was, that messes it up for other generations, and that messes up our economics. And economics, in turn, that will mess up our finances. That will mess up our dollars and cents. That will mess up our families, our abilities to, to even care for ourselves, even our healthiness, our life, our longevity. And it's skull and bones. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's Ezekiel chapter 37. You understand? And the word says preach to them. Preach to them. The Ethiopians lack education and training and are hungering for it, preferably from teachers of their own color. So now people say, oh, these white missionaries going over there. I mean, we're not even functioning as we should at this time, churchically. You know what I'm And this is one of the reasons why we want to bring this forward, our UCC, L-O-J-S, UCC. There must be a universal church code. And we say church, we're not just speaking about it as a place to come and just, just weep, wail, and moan, but we're talking about church in the true sense of what a church is, especially a church of I and I as Beta Israel. You know what I'm saying? Is for us. It's like a synagogue among the Jews. In that sense, when we say church, it's kind of like a synagogue among the Jews on that sort of level. But we have the Moshiach. You understand? The Moshiach in spirit and in truth. Now, the Ethiopians now not, not receiving any people of their own color, right? Or not as many as they probably should. Maybe a small paltry number. Right, of individuals and maybe few real organizations, brothers and sisters forming organizations, taking self responsibility and then therefore collective responsibility, they is desperate. They they work with other nations coming. I mean, what do you expect? You know, we're not there and then if we see video and see other people building kibbutzes there, when we should have been building our own kibbutzes there, we get all upset. You know, while we're dealing with a lot of nigga shit over here. So this is this is this is evidence. This testifies. So get up all get get off of that emotionalism. This is the knowledge of it. The Afro American needs an outlet for his trained youth. It's talking about we have trained youth. Oh well well let's say we have college educated folk. Maybe some really trained youth amongst them. But Ethiopia and and, and we say Ethiopia by extension, Africa. And, and Ghana and other places in Africa where we have Rastafari and communities of, of, of our fellow in spirit and true faithful ones like ourselves by whatever name or, you know, tribal affiliation associate they may go by. You know what I'm saying? They also need outlet. You understand? They need, we need to fellowship. We need to work together. There's so many checks in our checklist that are checked off by thinking and acting in this way because it's about our homeland and our homeland security, right? And if the economic depression lasts in America, opportunities for skilled Negroes will become increasingly less. It's almost like this was written now, except for saying Negroes, say black Americans, you could say it like that, right? You know, will be considerably less, and we are in that particular time. And um, there's other issues, dual citizenship and all that, but we, we can't really call for that yet when we don't even have the spree de corps. We don't even have organization. This is 